Hi guys and girls on YouTube. Right, if you watch my last video, which was called Let's Take a Look at the Decker Tatung 120 Chassis Vintage TV, um, you'll recognise this TV. Um, now this had a fault on it and I actually found it was the EH Tripler. EHT Tripler was faulty. Um, now years ago, if you had a telly, 30 years ago, you had a telly and the Tripler went faulty, all you did is you just looked through your spares catalogue, you just picked out the right one and you just ordered it. But 30 years forward, these Triplers are virtually non-existent now. You cannot buy these anywhere. Um, now that's a big problem because how am I going to keep all my vintage TVs running if I can't, if I get another one where the tripler goes down and I haven't got any more because I've just used the last one. So in this video, we're actually going to be taking a look at this tripler and uh, we're going to reproduce it. We're going to remake a brand new one. Uh, and of course, there's lots of different triplers, but this will give you the general idea. And uh, with a few ideas, you should be able to make any tripler you want for any TV. So we'll just stop the camera and uh, we'll take a look. Right, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look up this tripler in a data book and um, see what this tells about it. Um, so you know it's a BG200 made by Mullard. Um, that's my data book, 1983. Um, so here we go. Page 179, voltage multiplying module. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. BG200, high voltage tripler. Uh, voltage in, peak to peak, is 8.3 kV. Voltage out is 25 kV. Um, focus potential is 8.3 kV. And the maximum output current is 1 milliamp which will actually be um, probably set to that electrically by the beam limiter and the telly so we don't exceed that. Um, so really that doesn't tell us a great deal about it. Right, so now let's take just a quick look at the service manual um, for the Decker 120 TV. Um, so that's the tube there, that's the final anode. Um, on this TV it's 25 kV. If we trace that back to there, the EHT tripler. Um, so we've got the input from the overwinding, um, we've got the focus potential output, which actually goes to, um, no, sorry, that's wrong. That is the earth output there. Um, that's the focus potential output, which actually goes to the focus control for the electrostatic focusing and the A1 control, which is all built into one module the a1 is in series with the focus it's tapped off at the earthy end of the focus voltage and we've got the output to the um, crt so you've got four connections on the tripler and the telly right so we've got a bit of an idea how the tripler works we've got a little bit of data on it not too much uh, we're going to find out the rest by reverse engineering it um, now I've drawn a diagram here of the uh, cockcroft walton tripler that's the most common design in tvs um, it's a three-stage tripler, uh, which means whatever you put in, you get three times more out. So um, the, the data, we've got 8.3 kV in, which is um, a line AC line pulse of 8.3 kV. The first stage takes it to 16.6, and the third stage takes it to 24.9, which the manufacturers call 25 kV. So that's the basic design of the tripler. Um, now... Um, by looking at that, we know there's 8 kV across the diode. Um, so it wouldn't be too difficult to guess a diode. Um, we need to build in some sort of a safety margin. We need a diode that runs at more than 8.3 kV. Um, and the capacitors, I'll show you in a minute. But one other thing, um, the Mullard BG4, um, BG200 actually has four pins. Now, if we draw a Cockcroft Walton... Um, we've only got two. We've got one in and one out. So where do the other pins come from? Um, well, it's simple. The other pins, uh, we need to supply a focus voltage again of 8.3 kV. So you take a look at the uh, tripler and then I'll just add in the components where we go. we're going to tap the focus voltage off from here because it's a convenient 8.3 kV feed. Um, so I'll just take a blue pen and we'll just add on a couple more components onto the design. 
Right, so if you take a look at how I've modified the diagram, we've added two more parts. Um, we've added a capacitor there, and I've also taken that to a ground connection. And also, we've added a tap here, a tap-off point of the 8K, 8.3K V supply. So if you look now, we've got one, two, three, four pins on our tripler. Um, now that, that matches the one in the TV. Um, so let's talk about this first. Um, it's an 8 kV, 8.3 kV pulse in. It's a line pulse. Um, now we've got to smooth that and it's also got to be smoothed to the um, CRT. So first thing we want to do is we want to smooth the focus supply here because it's actually a pulse voltage. So what we do is we add another capacitor here and we take the other leg of that to ground. Um, now that will smooth the output of the focus supply and give us a steady 8.3 kV uh, voltage there. Now obviously these capacitors here, these four capacitors, they don't play any part in the smoothing. All they concerned with is tripling the voltage from 8 25 kV. Um, so on the output here we've got um, it's 25 kV, but it's pulsed at high frequency. Now we need to smooth that as well. So I'll just um, draw another diagram and we'll take a look at that. Right, so here's the CRT and the tally. Um, now, if you've ever smashed a CRT, and I smashed loads in my younger days as a kid, um, the inside of this flare is all silver plated. It's an electrically conductive material. Um, which is actually connected, if you can see up there with the torch, that's the anode cavity, that's where the 25 kV in goes in. Um, now that button there is actually connected to the silver plating on the inside of the TV. Now if we look at the outside of the tube, um, it's not very, not got very good light in here, um, but if you look at the outside, there's a big spring there, and that's actually connected to earth, and that spring runs across this wire, which is actually connected to the back of the tube. Now, the back of the tube is painted with an electrically conductive paint, um, and they call that the Aquadag coating. Um, so, the back of the tube's got electrically conductive painting on, and it's connected if you can see it down there, it's connected to an earth wire that goes to earth. So we'll just stop the camera and I'll explain the principle. Right, so here I've drawn a quick representation of the tube. Um, so, like I said before, the inside of the tube is coated with some electrically conductive silver material. And that actually is connected through the glass, through a button called the anode cavity. Now that's where you put the, the 25,000 volts in. That goes to this big plate inside the glass. Now the back of the tube is connected with electrically conductive paint to earth. So what happens is we've got, we've now formed two plates. We've got an earth plate on the outside of the tube which is connected to earth by a big spring and the inside of the tube we've got a metal plate carrying 25,000 volts. Um, now in between that is the actual glass of the tube, probably about half an inch thick glass. So effectively what we've made now is a giant capacitor. One plate of the um, tube's got 25 kV and the other plate is connected to ground. So that's why it's so important on the back of the tube the electrically conductive paint, the Aquadag, that's got to be connected to earth. Um, now I've measured the tube in my set um, between here and here um, and it actually have a capacitance of a thousand PF or one nanofarad. So this is effectively the tube is presenting to the circuit a capacitance of one nanofarad. So if we draw that into the diagram now, the 25,000 volt output is presented to the tube um, which when you earth that bottom the electrically conductive paint that actually forms a thousand pf capacitor on the output of the tube so that takes care of the smoothing on the output because don't forget 
um, this voltage here is going to be a pulse voltage 25 kV pulse at line frequency it's not going to be a steady DC but when we connect it to the tube it actually forms a steady DC voltage so um, just before we move on I'll just show you another point I'm sure you already know this but there'll be people out there that don't right so we, we've got a better picture now I've turned the telly on it's uh, upside down so that's the anode cavity button there um, that's the back of the tube, that's the electrically conductive plate uh, paint that forms the other half of the capacitor. Uh, that's a spring there and a wire that connects across that and takes it to earth. Now, because I've explained the tube's a giant capacitor, what happens is when you turn off the mains, this being a big capacitor, it remains charged. Now, this is a very important safety device. Um, you could get a very potential dangerous shock even when the telly's unplugged. So what we do is we take two insulated screwdrivers, you put one in the anode cavity, and you touch that onto there, and then you touch the other end onto the Aquadag coating at the back like that. Now that will discharge the tube, um, so it means that now you can actually put your finger there and you won't get a shock because the tube's dead. Um, if we just unplug that from the mains, there'd be a hell of a charge left on there and you could get a really nasty shock by touching that. Um, so you must discharge the tube's capacitance um, before you do anything else. Right, so, so far we've covered how we smooth the output voltage um, using the tube self-capacitance itself. Uh, we've also covered how we get the focus supply by taking the tappy off and adding the smoothing capacitor. So all we've got to do now is put some values to these parts. Um, now the diodes, we know there's going to be 8 kV across each diode. So what we need to do is build in the safety margin uh, and we need a diode that will stand off more than 8.3 kV. Um, now um, the capacitors, we're not sure what value they are. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a look inside the old tripler first. We'll just do a little bit of a bit of guesswork and a bit of reverse engineering. Now, in case you didn't know, um, the tripler, because it carries very high voltages, it's got to be well insulated. So it's actually filled with epoxy resin. Um, now, just because it's filled with epoxy resin doesn't mean to say it's not going to give up its secrets. Um, you just need a couple of simple tools to have a look inside it. And this is all we use. It's uh, a ball pane hammer and uh, a cold chisel. Right, so um, we've totally destroyed the tripler getting it to bits. That's all that's left of it. Um, see, it's still got the anode cavity cap uh, attached there. Um, now, if we look inside, there's a capacitor there, a capacitor there, and the diodes are all around the middle. Um, now, I would have expected to see five capacitors in here, but I'm only actually seeing two. Now, that was a bit of a puzzle until I started unwrapping them and I realised what's happened. Um, so, if, if look, one of the capacitors here I've unwrapped, um, and actually, there's a tapping point there. There's like um, a, a terminal that's riveted on. So effectively, we've got one capacitor this side, we've got one capacitor there, and we've got the common link in the middle. So if you move to the diagram there, we've got the left-hand capacitor, uh, the, the bit in the middle where it's tapped off, and the right-hand capacitor. So if you look in there, that's the bit in the middle where it's tapped off. This forms the left-hand capacitor, and this forms the right-hand capacitor. So that's the mystery solved, why I can only see two capacitors when there should be um, five. Now also, I managed to recover one of the high voltage diodes. Um, now there's no number on that because the number has actually come off and it's embedded in the resin. So now we've solved the capacitor mystery. We've also got a part number for this diode. So uh, let's stop the camera and we'll just take a look at that. Right, so we've recovered a diode out of the old tripler. Now, let me just explain before we move on why you can't test high voltage diodes with an ordinary multimeter. Um, use an ordinary multimeter and that will appear to be open circuit even when it's not. Um, now, high voltage diodes, 
if we were to break that open, there wouldn't be one, just one diode element inside. There might be 20, 30, 40, all in series. So to keep it simple, let's just pretend there's 10 diode elements inside. So here I've drawn 10 diode elements. Now, if there were silicon diodes and each one had um, a forward voltage of 0 0.7, so we've got 10 diodes in series for, say, for uh, argument's sake. Um, so 10 times 0 0.7 gives us a voltage of 7. Um, now, these analogue multimeters only run on 2AA batteries, which was only 3 volt. Um, so that's the reason, if you were to test a high voltage diode on an ordinary meter, um, it would appear open circuit. Because these actually consist of many, many diodes in series. Um, and if you count each one as 0 0.7, so if there was 40 diodes, um, you'd need about 28 volts. Um, before you could actually uh, in your multimeter before you could actually test it so right that's the um, I've explained about the high voltage diode let's move on right so I've actually recovered the diode well one of the diodes from the tripler um, and the part number is not on the diode it's imprinted in the um, epoxy resin it must have come off in the resin uh, but anyway um, the diode in the tripler is a BY409 so if we look here in my equivalent book, uh, BY409 and BY409A, uh, we move across, it's a silicon diode made by Philips. Um, the BY409 has a rating of 11.5 kV and the BY409A is 12.5 kV um, at 2.5 milliamps. Now the one we've got, it's just a mark by 409 um, so we'll take it the diode is 11.5 kV at two and a half milliamps so um, I've made a note of it there um, so basically now we just need some diodes and we need some capacitors um, now this has only got 8.3 kV across it and it's it's measured at um, the manufacturers have put 11.5 kV in so they've allowed a 3 kV safety margin. Um, so for the capacitor, what we're going to do is select a capacitor with a voltage of 3 kV or more above 8.3 kV. So uh, we want the BY409. Let's have a look at BY409, yeah. Let's take that one down. And that, that is the BY409s that we're going to be uh, rebuilding the tripler with. Right, okay guys. Right, so if you take a look at that now, I've updated the circuit diagram I've drawn with the diode part numbers. Um, now, now we've got to make a guess for these capacitors next. So first let's examine the capacitors in the old tripler. Well, if you look on the ones on the input, uh, they appear to be a bit larger than the ones on the output. Um, now, the only reason I can see that, apart from the the focus uh, capacitor, might need to be a bit larger uh, than these. Uh, but the other reason I think they've made the one on the input um, larger is because we've got a capacitor with three taps on, whereas the one on the output might only have two uh, now i'm guessing that what they've done is they've made the plates bigger on this um, so they can make a smaller diameter capacitor um, so it all fits in the same case um, now that, that's just my assumption but let's put some values to these capacitors so we're feeding the 25 kv into the tube capacitance of one nanofarad so, for argument's sake, let's make all these capacitors one nanofarad. Uh, now, we know the diodes have got 8.3 kV across them. We know the manufacturers have used 11.5 kV. So, let's make these capacitors um, rated for 12 kV. Now, what we're going to do, just in case we do need a larger one here in the focus, 
um, both of these points actually come out of the tripler so if we don't use a large enough capacitance there to um, smooth and stabilize the focus voltage we can actually fit an external one on the output so I'm not too concerned about that so let's make all these capacitors um, one nanofarad right so I've had a look I don't find any I don't find I've got in stock any 12 kV capacitors at one nanofarad so I'm going to do what they do usually do in electronics is pick the nearest preferred value and make it a little bit higher so here we've got two 750 pf capacitors rated at 12 kV um, I'm going to put them in parallel and that will give us a value of 1.5 nanofarads or 1500 pf um, now these are the these capacitors are very highly stressed so you need a proper quality one these aren't the the mickey mouse ones that you buy from china that are remarked with the uh, numbers that aren't right so let me just show you in comparison that's the difference between the uh, the mickey mouse capacitors that pretend to be rated at high voltages when they aren't and that is the real deal so right guys i'll just stop the video and uh, we'll start manufacturing the tripler now we've got some values and some component parts right so just before we uh, stop the camera and we move on um, this is what we're going to be using to uh, remanufacture a new tripler uh, we've got five diodes and ten capacitors because we're going to put five in parallel with the other five um, so yeah that's what's left of the old tripler um, we're going to have to use that EHT lead we're going to have to cut that off there and reuse that but uh, yeah stick with me guys and let's see where we go from here right everybody so that's the completed EHT tripler um, what I've used as, as I've used the anode lead off the old tripler um, if you can see I've just cut it off there uh, that's the completed tripler built up uh, all that remains to do now is um, put the top on drill a little hole in it somewhere and then actually fill all that up with epoxy resin uh, now I've got a little bag here it's 100 grams of radio spares epoxy resin uh, unfortunately I've had that a long time and it's it's gone out of date and the hardener looks a bit manky so I'm not going to risk it I'm going to order a, a, a new 100 bag gram from radio spare so that's a completed triple I'll just turn it over the other side I've labeled up the pins you've got the focus there you've got the uh, overwinding input and uh, that's the earth down there so let's uh, let's just get another bag of this uh, ordered up and uh, we'll see where we go then right so here we go the epoxy resins arrived from uh, radio spares um, I got a hundred gram bag um, which is probably far more than we need um, that's the capacitors all in ready um, I've drilled two holes in the top to pour the resin in uh, it'll go in one and when it rises up the other uh, we know we've got enough in right everybody so that's the new EHT tripler made um, now I've just remembered and it's a bit too late now I forgot to incorporate on the bottom um, some uh, fastening so I could screw it to the board so it's not a big deal um, I've got some double sided tape here so we're going to fasten it in with some double sided tape if we turn it around you can see the two holes there where I've pulled the resin in um, it's been on the radiator overnight so it should be fully hardened let's just um, plug it into the TV now and um, give it a whirl see what happens well there you go as you can see it fitted all right I've just um, stuck it down with some double sided tape um, it's a great pity we didn't put something on the base and use the screws for the, exist the uh, existing mounting screws um, but never mind you can't get everything right um, so yeah that's that's fitted nicely we'll just uh, switch it on now see what happens right guys so as you can see the triple's in um, that's it down there let's just switch the set on um, I've already got it connected to my uh, teletest colour bar generator
that's the picture up turn the generator on oh. I have to go from the side because it keeps getting that black bar from the camera um, that's a cross arch um, now the only job remains is just to do the grey scale um, which is a little green so we just take a screwdriver uh, which one is it that one there yes, it's a bit green that I think that's good enough. Colour bars. Right, let's connect this to a skybox and have a look at the picture. So, right, let's just take one more final look at the back and then uh, we'll turn it on. Um, I've set up the grayscale and uh, incidentally, I've taken, I've done some more disassembly on the old tripler. Uh, and I've actually found out uh, what's gone wrong with it, what the problem is. So, um, yeah, I'll put that on right at the end of the video. So we turn it on. It's already fastened to a skybox. Oh, that's handy. No picture. Let's get um, something better on. Yeah, there we go. Liquidize the apples here. And then gonna mix that with uh, some cream and rum. Just see if we can get rid of that black band that's coming from the camera. I don't know. I don't know how you make it. I don't believe in it. Well, I think it's eggs. No, I can't get rid of it, but there you go, you can see everything's up and running. Yeah, so there we go. What a good result that is. Right, I'll just stop the camera and then um, we'll just take a quick look at what's gone wrong with the old tripler. It's a lot of thinner actually. If it's too much, I can. Oh no, it's not too much. Right, I nearly forgot this actually. One more last thing we need to check is uh, just the EHT. Uh, it should be 25 kV if everything's all right. So I'll just get the, that's it, get the camera in focus, switch the telly on. And the apple are a one solid mass. There we go, 25 kV. So yeah, all up and running. Let's take a look now at the, uh, the old tripper and see what's gone wrong with it. Right, so here's what's left of the old tripler. Um, I've cut these uh, capacitors with a hacksaw, so we just pull that one off there. Um, now let me just get something to point with. If we look at the end there, the old capacitor, you can see there, just there where it's actually the end of the capacitor's tracked across. Uh, it's all burnt there. And if we take a look at um, the fiberglass resin where the capacitor was sat, can you see it there where it's, it's tracked right across the end of the capacitor? Uh, that's all carbonized and burnt. So, uh, yeah, that's what's gone wrong with the old tripler. Um, capacitor on there and uh, it's actually tracked across right at the end under there where you can't see now I really wouldn't have expected that um, not with this sort of construction of capacitor um, I would have expected one of the diodes to have gone short but yeah that's that's the problem there and that now um, is all that's left of the old tripler so yeah guys thanks for watching and uh tally's still running um subscribe to my channel for some more interesting videos um just a quick word of warning though um 
25,000 volt that's a lot of power that's very dangerous so um, don't attempt anything like this unless you're experienced at dealing with high voltages all right guys thanks for watching and i'll hopefully see everybody in the next video Her recipes to stay in the competition. Hello everybody, this is the horrid bit because somebody will be going home. This is, as you know, the eliminator round. It all comes down to this plate of food. Angela, who's taking food? So, first cook, my fellow judges and I would like to see cook again, is you, Fern. The next cook is you, Corinne. The next cook we'd like to see cook again is you, Ruth. And the next cook we'd like to see in the Eliminator... Interesting. ...is you, Tom.